together and uh, organizing those kind of meetups so you all uh, get to see each other before the uh, before the big event. Um, our our uh, association welcomes members from all kind of background. Uh, doesn't, you don't you don't have to be a developer to join us. We have economists, lawyers, and uh, and so on inside, and uh, business oriented, and as uh, as well as non business oriented people. And we do free workshops, yeah, like this one. Uh, most of our workshops are hands on. We learn to code. We learn to deploy smart contract. We learn to deploy nodes and interact with the blockchain and get to know anything that should be interesting for you to uh, to learn about the blockchain. Um, if you want to support us. Uh, please give us credibility by tweeting our name and joining our Facebook page. Uh, we also have YouTube, a YouTube channel. Uh, our workshops are recorded and uh, should be on YouTube hopefully someday. Um, if you want to support our action, you can join uh, our community, you can join Asset. Uh, it costs you 10 euros to join and uh, you can pay in crypto of course. Uh, what uh, does it give you to join Asset? Well, those kind of, uh, of presentation, those PowerPoints are only available to our members. So if you want to pick the slide after workshops, you have to be a member. And you can also join our Slack and discuss uh, with us anytime. So there is a link in the description of the meetup if you want to join. And for that special week, we are very happy to welcome people from all over Europe, all over the world, and even from China to join us uh, in Paris. Uh, to yesterday, we had great project presented, notably Beyond the Void, and the people from Beyond the Void are in this room somewhere. Yeah, if you are interested with uh, this wonderful project of video game using blockchain for handling the the marketplace <coughs> in, the, uh, in the game, please uh, have a talk with them. Uh, we also had uh, Abby found a project for a charity on the blockchain uh, done by Julien Beranger. <coughs> who is not here, I guess, but maybe join later. And so today I already told you what, uh, what we, we are going uh, to be seeing. And uh, tomorrow, if you want to join us, uh, you will have uh, a workshop, an hands-on workshop on Oracleize with Thomas Bettany. The CEO of Oracleize is here to, to give us a pitch about his solution to, to bring data from an API to, uh, from an API to, uh, to the blockchain. Here? Not, not here. It will be at uh, La Payas. Uh, you have the address uh, on the meeting. It's next to Strasbourg Saint Denis. Not, not, not far away, though. And uh, after Thomas will uh, show us uh, how Oracleize work, we will do hands-on uh, smart contract coding uh, with uh, with him. And then the next day we have a big event. Um, with uh, IEXEC, Oracleize, Golem, and also uh, Clément Le Sage from the Decentralized Court. Uh, a panel about the, this team, computation beyond and above the blockchain. What can you do on the blockchain? How to bring big computation on the blockchain? That will be the topic that we'll be discussing. And before that meetup, <coughs> before the uh, tomorrow, uh, next day's meetup, uh, there will be a cocktail party and uh, startup pitching uh, by our colleague from Chaintech. So if you read the <coughs> meetup, I, I eat some it all up, so just check it out. So, uh, who's the first? It's it's you all. Ah, it's me. No, it's uh, it's right, I'm sorry. And you, you can pick beer upstairs. Uh, if you want to pick beers, there is some upstairs. Uh, <coughs> it's three euro, I guess. And hey, and also the six people to present today is you, Philip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you just not pass. No. 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 Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sebastien. I am uh, co-founder of Stratum. So I'm also marketing director there, director of community relations. 
Um, and so Stratum is a company that works with large enterprise companies. We're based in Paris, and we uh, help them secure their workflows uh, using all types of technologies and notably blockchains. Uh, as a side note, I'm also the co-host of a podcast called Epicenter uh, that uh, has been around for quite a while, and we uh, interview leading thinkers, entrepreneurs, um, academics, uh, developers, and you know, basically everybody in the space that's doing interesting stuff. So I do invite you to check that out. <clears throat> so we're, we're now living in an economy of data. There's data everywhere. Uh, the rate at which data is being produced is, is expanding at, uh, you know, at, at a pretty good rate. Uh, and this is particularly accelerated by the phenomena of IoT. And you know, all of us here probably have some sort of an IoT device either on us or at home. And you know, consumer IoT is becoming sort of mass, uh, a massively adopted type of technology. But uh, increasingly, IoT is also being um, uh, adopted in enterprise. <coughs> and IBM, as most of you probably know, uh, predicts that in 2050, there will be over 100 billion IoT devices. And a lot of these are going to be in sort of B2B enterprise settings, right? So um, in the energy market, in supply chains, uh, IoT devices, gathering data and feeding that data into some type of IT system. And as this, as this data continues to explode, our, our current IT systems are sort of starting to break at the, at the seams. Uh, we see increasing number of scandals of data leakage, um, I think some of you might uh, think of one data leak today, uh, which is quite telling. So, and and you know, large large companies are particularly worried about this sort of thing. So, if we look at uh, so the regulation in, in 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 Europe, you have EDAS regulation, uh, also the new data protection rules, and in fact, uh, a lot of companies are sort of thinking or trying to trying to figure out how they're going to handle all of this data and how are they going to secure it. Well, what we need is a is a cryptographic audit trail in order to secure that data and uh, allow for companies to uh, better uh, use that data with their partners and clients. So just some of the scandals, right, I mean, that we've seen. Uh, so sometimes it's data corruption, sometimes it's data leakage, sometimes it's hacks, so right, we need a way to secure this data. <coughs> and so some of the things that we're trying to address are these fundamental problems. So primarily, uh, there are four problems that we try to address. One is the fact that as individuals and companies, we have less and less control over our private data. You know, all of us here, we have our individual uh, data with Facebook, Twitter, the state, our banks, etc. And it's becoming harder for us to track that. I mean, who here knows exactly where their identities live and, to a lesser extent, control them? And this is mostly due to the fact that IT systems are monolithic and they're, uh, they exist in silos. And this uh, creates a certain number of complexities, one of which is that they are vulnerable. We are vulnerable IT systems. Um, since one administrator can be hacked, one administrator, be, can, administrator can be compromised, and this is, a, this is a major problem. And it also makes it difficult for companies to collaborate, right? If you have siloed IT systems, well, what are you going to do? You're going to have to rely on a trusted third party in order to bridge those connections. And this is why we have uh, um, settlement houses and, and trusted third parties and this sort of thing. And one of the things that's often overlooked is uh, the cost of regulatory compliance. And this is something that uh, enterprise clients are particularly uh, attentive to: is my IT systems? How can I make them? How can I reduce my regulatory compliance cost? And so, in the new vision that we envision, we we envision a, a, a world in which companies and individuals have restore the control over their private data. So they control where their data is being sent and how it's being used, and they can revoke that access whenever they want. Security is reinforced through decentralized networks, and we have secure and interoperable protocols to allow synchronization of data between different types of databases. <coughs> and overall, uh, again, this is something that corporations are very attentive to, is how can I be better tr transparent um, towards the regulator and how can I provide traceability to ensure that the regulator that what I'm doing is in fact uh, compliant with the law. <coughs> so enough of that. Um, what, we, what we provide at Stratum is uh, a series of a number of technologies that address these issues. So we provide technologies that will allow individuals and organizations to uh, protect their privacy through end-to-end -end encryption protocols that also have access controls. 
uh, through cryptographic audit trails, we'll be able to allow real-time auditing of processes. And this is, could be any type of industrial process. It could be a, um, a supply chain. It could be a document management <coughs> process. It could be something as simple as releasing a press release. Uh, there's processes in place uh, to uh, sort of encadre. Frame these uh, types of processes and they need to be respected. So this real-time auditing will allow that. Proof of integrity is also important. How can I provide the proof to my partners, clients, regulators that the data that I'm providing has not been corrupted? And how can I easily integrate that with my existing IT systems without having to rebuild everything? So uh, I'd like to talk to you about one project that we did with Bureau Veritas. So my presentation suffers from linguistic identity disorder. So it's half in French and half in English, <laughs> much like myself. Um, so the problem that Bureau Veritas, of course, Bureau Veritas is a, a very old certification organization here in France and Europe. And so they work with all types of industries to certify data. So for instance, if you have a supply chain, they'll be sitting on the docks, uh, say, when a boat comes into the dock to sign a bunch of documents certifying that what is coming off of the boat is one type of tuna and it was fished here and what have you. <clears throat> so what they had, uh, the problems that they were facing were related to transparency. So first, first of all, what's, what's the end goal here? So for something like tuna, you want to be able to prove to your consumer that they're eating a particular uh, type of tuna that was fished in this region, that it's not coming from a conflict zone, and this type of thing. And this has become increasingly uh, important as people are more conscious of the type of foods they eat. Uh, organic foods is very similar, um, sort of type of uh, label rouge, uh, this sort of thing is also sort of fits in that mind frame. So there's a, um, <clears throat> a responsibility towards consumers and merchants that the, the, of the provenance of, um, of products. Uh, they were also trying to address the problem of uh, corruption in the data that they were certifying. So if I'm providing proofs to a customer, to a merchant, this sort of thing, how can I prove that the data that is feeding into that process is in fact uh, integral? And how can I provide an symmetry of information between my partners? So you know, when, um, when the uh, shipping company gets the fish from, from the dock, uh, from the boat, how do they know <coughs> that uh, this is in fact fish that was coming from one region, and how can I <coughs> synchronize all that information in a way that doesn't create lags or, um, uh, well, so that it's in real time. <coughs> and so this is just sort of the schematics of what we, you know, of that, of that supply chain. So a fish comes off a boat, uh, that boat is, is, is uh, that fish, sorry, is transported into trucks, then into cold storage, and then processing, and then again, shipment to a retailer and then finally into a customer's plate. And so Bill Veritas sits at every, every one of these steps and they're the certification agency that certifies all the documents. At the moment, all of the documents in this, in this process are mostly paper-based or at least some sort of digitized version of paper like a PDF. So what we did with Trusted Workflow is we applied traceability to the entire chain. So we're able to trace all of the documents and have a cryptographic audit trail of all the documents in that, in that supply chain where falsification of the documents becomes impossible since there are a number of nodes holding the documents and signatures attesting each of the documents. And finally, we have <laughs> auditability in real time for any participant in the network or a regulator that would want to audit that process. So just a few screenshots of you know, this, this, this one POC. So there's a, uh, a back end uh, where any of the participants can log in. Uh, sign and upload documents. So in this particular talk, we're talking about PDFs that have the X509, X509 signature um, uh, standard, but in the future, we're thinking of uh, fully digitized data, so you know, data points that can, that can be signed individually and not you know, just some sort of digital representation of paper. And on the right, we have you know, the, the Stratum Audit Hub, which allows any of the participants to look at each data point, see the hashes of the data with the signature, and there's a cryptographic audit trail, so there's sort of a hash chain uh, that links each of these pieces of data together, and that, that entire process is, uh, is uh, logged into a blockchain. So since I'm running low on time here, I just want to talk about the technology. So proof of process is the protocol that Stratum has developed to share <coughs> proofs of data and share proofs of the entire of an entire process with a partner, with a client, with um, a, a supplier, <coughs> while keeping it secure and underlying while keeping underlying data secure and private. So just 
quickly here, this is the first time I show this actually because I don't usually show this to a technical audience. So um, this is the stratum stack. So on the one hand, we have uh, you know proprietary applications. So it could be an ERP, it could be a BPM system like Bonita Soft uh, or something like that. And these applications, you know, they they live as they do and they sit on on the on the on the on the server of the client. <coughs> There's then a stack of open source software that's divided into two parts. And this is the stratum stack. And this can be deployed on premise. So a, a bank or a consortium of banks may decide to deploy that stack on premise, or they may decide uh, that they would like us to host it through SaaS. You know, there's different types of service level agreements that we can provide there. And this open source stack is, is divided into two parts. The first part is what we call the agent. And so the agent is the interface, the HTTP interface that will connect to the, to the blockchain network. And it's made up of a back end and a front end. So the, the back end is, uh, is, a, uh, is a template in which uh, the client can write their own API. So there's a very simple language that's based on, on JavaScript. Well, actually, it's, it is JavaScript. It's, it's in Node.js, but it's sort of a subset um, that allows you to write functions that are basically the endpoints to your API. So for something like a BPM, Right process it it would be somewhat standard you know if we're talking about something quite proprietary that agent code would be you know, more uh, proprietary and the map explorer is the front end so it's what you saw on the on the right a while ago right the, the supply chain uh, which allows you to look at that supply chain look at that process and each of the steps <laughs> and then there's the storage so the storage layer in our case is a blockchain so once uh, a step in a process has been added to uh, what we call a chain map, what, we, what you saw a while ago on the right, uh, it gets added to, um, into, it gets sent to the blockchain core. And so we're, the, the networks that we're deploying are uh, a fork of Tendermint, um, we're calling it Indigo. And so Indigo will be the name of the, of the, of the open source technology that we'll be releasing very soon. <coughs> and so in a consortium style blockchain, this uh, would get sent to a number of nodes. So we would have replication of the process uh, distributed over uh, a number of nodes. Now, just to give you an example of different actors that can come into this, so an auditor might connect to uh, one uh, of the nodes through a front-end application to have a look at the entire process and to be able to see that every step has been completed according to regulation and they can see the signatures and this sort of thing. Uh, and the certificate authority may even want to connect, you know, may provide PKI uh, to the individual participants in the network. And then finally, this is where we make our money. So the Stratum License uh, Service Level Agreement, where we provide services, so training, consulting, and support, and we also provide a uh, platform as a service where we'll have a block explorer, custom block explorers for different industry verticals, uh, some management consoles, and a system that we're will be releasing as well called Blueprint, and Blueprint is the, the, the supporting application that will allow the consortium to deploy their blockchain and manage uh, all the governance aspect of the blockchain. So this will be platform as a service, and the open source stuff uh, will be released in open, as open source in the, first, in the second quarter of this year. So just finally, so proof of process allows you to, to, to prove five pieces of information about a, about a process, who, what, when, where, and why. So what refers to what data, so what are we talking about? So let's say we're talking about a, a signing a, a digital document. Um, what are we, for each step of the process, what is it that we're talking about? Are we talking about sending an email? Are we talking about signing? Is there an error? Uh, proof of anteriority uh, is, uh, is the when, so it's provided by the immutable blockchain network. The non-repudiation is provided by signatures through each of the steps. Uh, is signed. Uh, the contextual proof is the is uh, is the where. So does this step happen before the other? Right. It's the hash chain. And finally, the what or sorry, the why rather is the legal context of the proof. So once I have all this, I can sort of tokenize this process and say this legally represents one thing or another, and I can then initiate some sort of another action at the end. Mm -hmm. I think I'm running very late. So. Uh, here's our team, so we're <coughs> nine people. We raised Series A in 2016. We're now finalizing Series A, uh, and uh, we're hiring. So we're based here in Paris. If you're interested in, in uh, talking to us, do reach uh, reach us uh, at our email, Twitter, Facebook, wherever. Um, and uh, yeah. also, I just wanted to mention 
we're doing this on Friday. So, uh, if you haven't signed up, uh, we're having a party in our office on Friday. Um, I would just ask that if you want to come, it's open to anyone, but just RSVP so I know if I need to get three kegs or four kegs or five kegs. <laughs> um, so if you don't have time to write the link, it's on our Twitter, it's on our Facebook. Uh, so thank you very much. Questions? questions? Do I have no. time for questions? One, okay. if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one question. Okay, <laughs> I think fine. I'm over my time. Okay. Uh, what's your dependency on a specific blockchain technology? So can you migrate, for example, to Bitcoin, mm -hmm. to private Ethereum chain? That's or a very good else? question. So we started Stratum, for some of you who may have used the Stratum stack in the beginning, uh, we were using the Bitcoin network to notarize data. Uh, so we had sort of a, we had sort of a, a layer here, which was called the blockchain fossilizer, and it relied on the Bitcoin network to notarize in the Bitcoin network. Uh, we still offer that, it's still available. Uh, we will continue to offer it. The sort of demands of our clients right now and the way things are going, we're, we're, we want to deploy networks. So we want to be at the network layer. Uh, but that doesn't mean that for certain use cases, um, so for instance, if, if there's not a consortium, if you're just trying to sort of notarize data, you want to use the, fos the fossilizer to do that. Uh, if otherwise, if, you know, if you're a consortium, like a, say the FFA or some sort of uh, consortium of banks, you're going to want to deploy your own network because it's probably more efficient in the long run. Um, you know, different configurations for different use cases. Okay, so it's still fully open and people will be able to write their own if they want. Yeah, I mean, once this is open source, like, you can build, like this is, the storage layer here, mm. you can connect whatever you want to it. Yeah. So I'll be up, you know, I'll be around if there's any other questions. I don't want to take up too much time for the other speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.